Hey everyone and welcome to the deep dive. Today we're diving deep into the world of professional coaching. Ooh, exciting. Specifically, we're looking into becoming an Associate Certified Coach, or ACC. Okay. Through the International Coaching Federation, yeah. or ICF. Yeah, the ICF. And the source material we're using for this deep dive is the accandidateguide.pdf, directly from the ICF website. Perfect. Now, fair warning, this guide is pretty dense and a little hard to digest. It can be, yeah. But that's why we're here to break it down and give you the need-to-know info. Exactly. So you can decide if getting the ACC is something you want to pursue. The right path for you. Okay, so first things first. Yeah, let's start with the basics. What exactly IS coaching? Well, according to the ICF, yeah. coaching is a partnership oh. with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process Interesting. that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. So it's not just about yelling from the sidelines. You can do it. Ha ha ha. No, not quite. Right. It's more about asking the right questions. Right. Helping them come to their own conclusions and solutions. I see. So guiding more than directing. Yes, exactly. Got it. So now that we have a better idea of what coaching is all about, mm -hmm. why would someone want to get this ACC thing? Well, in a world where anyone can call themselves a coach. That's true. The ACC shows you've met a higher standard. A mark of quality. Yes, it demonstrates a commitment to professional and ethical practice. Okay. And it shows you've met stringent requirements for training and experience. So it sets you apart. Exactly. It's like a seal of approval. I like that. Makes sense. So you can stand out in that crowded coaching field. Okay. So let's get down to brass tacks. Sure. Yeah, the nitty gritty. What does it actually take to become eligible for the ACC? All right. So first you need at least 60 hours of specific coaching education. Okay. So no, just winging it. Haha. <laughs> no, you need structured training. Right. Of course. Then over 100 hours of client coaching experience. Wow, that's a lot of hours. It is. And here's the catch. Oh, there's a catch. A portion of those hours need to be paid. Paid hours? Why is that? It demonstrates you can attract and work with paying clients. So you can actually build a coaching business. Exactly. Showing you can walk the walk. That makes sense. You'll also need 10 hours of mentor coaching from a PCC or MCC level coach. Okay, so someone more experienced is guiding you. Exactly like a coach for your coaching. I like that. Then there's the performance evaluation, which can be a little intimidating. Why is that? Well, you have to submit a recording of an actual coaching session. A recording? Wow. Yes, a complete unedited session between 20 and 60 minutes long. With a real client. With a real paying client, not just a practice session. And I'm guessing there's paperwork too. You bet a transcript is needed as well. <laughs> you. I bet that makes people sweat a bit. It can be nerve wracking, but it's all about demonstrating your competency. Showing you can actually apply those coaching skills. Yes. And those ICF core competencies. Right. We've mentioned those a couple of times. They're really the foundation of the ICF's approach to coaching. Like the guiding principle. Exactly. And the evaluation ensures you can put them into action. Okay. So it's not just talk. It's about action. Exactly. Walking the walk. Makes sense. Now, before we move on, I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. What if English isn't my first language? That's a great question, and the ICF has thought about that. Good to hear. They offer language support options, like language aids for the exam questions, uh, okay. bilingual dictionaries, and even live translators. That's fantastic. Feel it. Really inclusive. They want to make the process accessible to everyone. I like that. So what about accommodations for, say, people with disabilities? The ICF follows ADA guidelines so they can request accommodations. So they're committed to making the process fair for everyone. Absolutely. That's great. Now, let's say you've jumped through all the hoops. Haha, uh -huh. yeah, it's a process. You've passed the exam and earned your ACC credential. A big accomplishment. But does it end there? Well, becoming an ACC is a great achievement, but it's really just the beginning. Oh, how so? The ACC is valid for three years. Okay. And to renew it, you need 40 hours of continuing coach education. So you have to keep learning and growing exactly it's all about continuous development wow so becoming acc is just the start of your journey as a coach it really is a commitment to lifelong learning that's pretty cool it is and it ensures you're always staying up to date in the field makes sense well this has been a great overview yeah we've covered a lot but before we move on i want to circle back to the performance evaluation sure what about it that recording piece can be intimidating it can be yeah what if you stumble during the session? Well, the assessors aren't looking for perfection. Okay. They're looking for competency. Can you apply the core competencies? So it's okay to make a few mistakes. Exactly. They understand real-world coaching isn't always perfect. 
That's reassuring. And of course, you need your client's permission to record. Oh, right. That's essential. You have to explain the process and get their informed consent. So transparency is key. Absolutely. And if they're not comfortable, you need to find another client. Okay. Makes sense now about that transcript. Oh, yes. Transcribing can be a lot of work. It can be time consuming. But it's important for the evaluation. It gives the assessors a clear record of the session. So they can see how you're applying those core competencies. Exactly. And it has to be formatted correctly with speaker labels and timestamps. Sounds like there's an art to it. There are guidelines to follow, but if it feels overwhelming, you can hire help. Oh, so there are professional transcribers available. Absolutely. They can make sure it meets all the ICF requirements. That's a good tip. I didn't realize that. It can be a lifesaver for some people. Now, you mentioned the transcript can also be helpful for the coach's own development. Oh, yes, definitely. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, by reviewing the transcript, you can analyze your coaching style. Oh, interesting. Identify patterns in your questions, see any blind spots. So it becomes a learning tool. Exactly. It's not just about passing the evaluation. It's about using the process to become a better coach. That's the goal. Continuous improvement. I love that perspective. It really ties back to that idea of lifelong learning. It does. This is a journey, not a destination. Well said. Now, I know we've covered a lot. We have. It's been a great discussion. But let's get back to that big one, the ICF credentialing exam. Ah, yes. The exam everyone wants to know about. We'll break that down in the next part of our deep dive. Sounds good. We'll delve into the structure, the domains, and those situational judgment items. Can't wait. All right. So... For everyone listening. Yeah, join us for part two. Where we'll tackle the exam head on. See you there. All right, welcome back to our deep dive into the ACC. We're ready to tackle that big one, the exam. Yes, the ICF credentialing exam. A lot of people get nervous about this part. I can understand why. Can you give us a quick overview of what it's like? Well, it's computer-based. Okay. And it's delivered in two sections. Okay, two parts. With a break in between. Okay, so you get a little breather. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned something about situational judgment items. Yes. Instead of typical multiple choice questions, okay. they give you realistic coaching scenarios. Oh, interesting. Like real life situation. Exactly. And you choose the best and worst responses. From a set of options. Right. So it's really testing your judgment. And how you'd handle those tricky situations. Exactly. Your ethical awareness and decision making skills. So it's not just about memorizing facts. No, it's about applying the ICF core competencies. Right, those core competencies. Another key. Can you remind us what those are all about? Sure. They're the foundation of ethical and effective coaching. Okay. A set of skills and behaviors that guide how coaches interact with clients. So like the guiding principles for coaching. Exactly. There are eight core competencies. Eight? Wow. And they cover everything from establishing the coaching agreement okay. to active listening, powerful questioning, creating awareness. So the exam is testing how well you understand and apply those competencies. Right. Exactly. And the questions assess your mastery across four key domains. Four domains. Tell me more about those. All right. So the first is foundation. Okay. Foundation, like the basics. Yes. It covers your understanding of the ICF code of ethics. Right. The ethical guidelines. And your ability to demonstrate a coaching mindset. So like the right attitude and approach. Exactly. Embodying those ethical principles. Okay. What's the second domain? That's co-creating the relationship. Okay. So building that relationship with a client. Exactly. Establishing a safe and trusting space. Right. That's crucial. And working collaboratively to define the coaching agreement. So everyone's on the same page. Right. Then we have communicating effectively. Yeah. Okay. That sounds important. It is. It's about really listening to your client. Deep listening. And communicating in a way that evokes awareness and facilitates learning. I see. So using powerful questions to guide them. Exactly. Helping them uncover their own insights. Okay. And what's the fourth domain? That's cultivating learning and growth. Okay. So helping them grow and develop. Yes. Helping them identify and achieve their goals. Right. Create action plans and navigate challenges. So supporting their progress towards their goals. Precisely being a partner in their journey. I like that. Now, can you give us an example of what one of those situational judgment items might look like. Okay, imagine a client is expressing frustration with a coworker. Okay, common situation. They're feeling stuck and unsure how to move forward. Happens to everyone. You're given four possible responses. Okay, let's hear them. First, offer advice based on your own experience. Okay. Second, ask them to explore their options and what they feel would be best. Okay. Third, suggest they talk to their manager. Okay. And fourth, share a personal anecdote about a similar challenge you face. Hmm. 
So four very different approaches. Right. Which do you think best aligns with those core competencies? Ooh, that's a tough one. It is. It's tempting to give advice, but... but we're not supposed to tell them what to do. Right. So I think the best response is encouraging them to explore their own options. Exactly. You got it. That feels more in line with those core competencies. Absolutely. It shows you understand powerful questioning and empowering the client. I see. I can see how these items really make you think critically. They do. And they reflect those complex real world scenarios. Where there isn't always a clear right or wrong answer. Exactly. It's about making those judgment calls. Okay. So practically speaking, how long is this exam? It's about three hours long, including the break. Okay. And it has 150 multiple choice questions. 150. Wow. About half of them are those situational judgment items. Okay. So that's a lot to prepare for. It is. So first and foremost, know those core competencies inside and out. They're the foundation. Exactly. The ICF website has lots of resources on them. Okay. So start there. And then practice, practice, practice. Right. Get familiar with those situational judgment items. The ICF offers practice exams too. That's a great tip. It helps you get comfortable with the format. And there are other resources too, right? Yes. Books, online courses, mock exams. So you don't have to go it alone. No, there's a whole support system out there. That's good to know because this is a big step. It is. But remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Pace yourself. Exactly. And the rewards are worth it. Okay. Now, before we move on. Sure. What happens after the exam? Let's mm -hmm. say you pass. Ah, yes. The next chapter. What can you expect? Well, first, a huge congratulations are in order. It's a big accomplishment. It is. But as we've discussed. This is just the beginning. It is. Earning the ACC is just the first step. All right. Welcome back to the deep dive. Back for the final part. We've covered a lot of ground so far. We have the eligibility requirements, the performance evaluation. And that big, scary exam. Right. The ICF credentialing exam. Now, let's imagine you've aced that exam. Passed with flying colors. You've officially earned your ACC credential. Congratulations are in order. It's a huge accomplishment. It is a big milestone. But as we've been saying throughout this deep dive. It's just the beginning. Right. Earning the ACC is just the first step. Exactly. It's uh, like getting your driver's license. Oh, I like that analogy. You've proven you know the rules of the road. But now you have to actually go out and drive. Yes. And gain that real world experience. Just like driving. You need to stay up to date. On those coaching best practices and ethics. Precisely so. Continuous learning is key. So how does that play out for an ACC coach? Well, remember... Those 40 hours of continuing coach education. Right, the CCEs. Those come into play now. So to renew your ACC. You need to accumulate those 40 hours. Within a three-year period. That's right. And we talked about the different ways to earn those hours. Training workshops, conferences, even peer coaching. So there's flexibility there. Yes, you can tailor it to your interests. And the areas you want to grow in. Exactly. It's about choosing what resonates with you. Now, you mentioned 24 of those 40 hours. Yes. You need to focus specifically on those ICF core competencies. Right. Why is that so important? Well, it's about staying sharp on those foundational skills. Right. The core principles of coaching. Exactly. And the ethical considerations. So the ICF wants to make sure you're maintaining that competency. Throughout your coaching career. It's like doctors staying up to date on the latest research. That's a great comparison. They have to keep learning and evolving. Exactly. And ethics are crucial in coaching, too. Right. That's why at least three of those core competency hours. Out of the 24. Need to be dedicated to coaching ethics. So it's a reminder that ethics are woven into everything we do as coaches. Absolutely. It's about making ethical decisions in our practice. Now, besides those CCE hours. Yes. There's another piece of the renewal puzzle. Mentor coaching. Right. You need to do that again. Even after you've earned your ACC. So you're still encouraged to seek guidance from a mentor. It's about acknowledging we're all lifelong learners. I love that no matter how experienced we are. There's always more to learn. And mentor coaching can provide that support and feedback. Absolutely. It helps you reflect on your practice. See those blind spots. And continue to grow as a coach. Yeah. It's like having that experienced eye looking over your shoulder. Exactly. They can offer valuable insights. Now, as we wrap up this deep dive. Yes. Any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, while the ACC is valuable... It shows you're committed to the profession. The true essence of coaching goes beyond any credential. It's about those intangible qualities. Right. Empathy, curiosity, presence, integrity. That deep desire to help others. It's about human connection and transformation. Beautifully said. So if you're drawn to coaching, 
Embrace that journey. With an open heart and a willingness to learn. The world needs more great coaches. I agree, and I believe you have the potential. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. It has. We've covered so much. Thank you for sharing your expertise. My pleasure. For all our listeners out there. Keep learning. Keep growing. And keep making a difference in the world. Until next time, happy coaching, everyone.